Let's take a closer look at the margin transaction. Margin. All right. Margin transactions it, or happen when investors borrow money from a broker dealer to buy security. So a broker dealer acts as a bank, as a lender. They loan money to the investor. They're helping the, to finance the investor's purchase of a stock or a bond. The broker dealer charges interest on the loan they make, okay? And then the client who borrows the money buys a stock and creates a commission for the brokerage firm as well. The Federal Reserve regulates margin transactions, so it's not the SEC, it's the Federal Reserve. They regulate margin transactions through regulations T and U, so there are two regulations in place, and they were developed after the 1929 crash because too much margin contributed to the crash of 1929, and so the government came up with some rules to, to try to keep margin under control. All right, investors must initially put down 50% of the value of the security being purchased. So there's an initial down payment, 50%. Investors must then maintain a margin or equity of 25%. So we'll go through how to calculate both of these things. Broker dealers can require a higher margin amount if they desire, but regulations T and U are 50% and 25% and these are the minimums. All right, let's take a look at computing the initial margin requirement, very straightforward. Assume you buy 200 shares of a stock at $50. The total value of the transaction, $50 times 200 shares, $10,000. Multiply the $10,000 by 50% to get your initial margin amount of $5,000. So you would borrow $5,000 from the brokerage firm. You would pay the brokerage firm interest on that $5,000. You would then pay the brokerage firm a commission to buy 200 shares of stock. All right, so you're borrowing 5,000. Now, let's look at an example of the 25% subsequent margin requirement. You must maintain equity of 25% of the current market value of the security that is being used as collateral. Remember, you've got a $5,000 loan that is backed by $10,000 worth of securities. Okay, for example, let's compute, or $5,000 worth of securities actually, but let's compute our equity. Let's assume the stock you paid uh, $50 per share for drops to $30. Okay, the total value of the stock is now $30 times 200 shares, $6,000. Okay. Your equity must be 6,000 times 0 0.25, 1,500. That must be your equity. Now let's compute your equity. Okay. You take the current market value of the security and subtract out the loan amount. That's your equity. So when the, when the stock is $30, your dollar equity is $6,000, which is $30 times 200 shares, $6,000, minus the amount that you owe the brokerage firm of $5,000. Your equity is $1,000. But your requirement is 6,000 times 0 0.25, 1,500. Therefore, you must kick in an additional $500 in cash to the brokerage firm. If you cannot pay that or will not pay that, the brokerage firm will sell the stock and will sue you for the balance of the loan. And this is what happened in 1929 and this is what happened in 1987 and that's why many people went bankrupt and killed themselves. Okay. So too much margin contributed this, to the crashes of 1929 and 1987. So this is a, a, a statistic. This is how much is out there loaned on margin is a statistic that is followed very closely. Let's see how far we go. Looks like we've got one more uh, slide. So using margin involves leverage. 
Leverage means you control large dollar amounts of securities with a lower dollar amount out of your pocket. Okay? Leverage amplifies your returns upwardly when returns are positive and downwardly when returns are negative. The leverage factor, how do we measure how much leverage you're using? You take the number one and you divide it by the percentage of equity that you have to put down. Okay? For example, if your equity is 50%, your leverage factor is one divided by 50% is two. This means for every 1% up or down move in a stock, your leveraged return will move twice that or 2%. And so you can see the more leverage you use, the higher your return might be, the lower your return might be. Very similar to what you see in derivatives like options and futures. Okay? So the lower the initial requirement, the more leverage and the more risk you're taking. The higher the leverage, the more amplified percentage gains and losses will be. Okay, so margin is a riskier way. When it, when it works right, it's a happy time. When it does not work right and the stock moves in the opposite direction, you could be in big, big financial trouble. All right, that's the end of this clip. We'll move on and take a look at uh, the folks who work at exchanges. Shalom.